It's first thing in the morning on a Saturday. I'm sitting in my patio in the backyard, looking out over what looks to be the beginning of a beautiful day. I've got a hot cup of coffee in front of me. And a good book that I'm reading while my cat, Beach Bum, climbs his favorite tree. Yeah, sometimes it's just the simple things that make up a perfect day, you know what I mean? I got two days off, and I'm not gonna waste them. The last time I did a show like this, I called it an awesome day in June. Well, this time out, I'm going to call it an awesome weekend in August. So what are we going to do this weekend? Well, we're going to surf, we're going to barbecue, and we're going to go see the newest superhero flick in the movies. But first, we're going to do something that I read about online that involves my little pal, Beach Bum the Cat. Now, when people think of using leashes, mostly you think about walking dogs. But I read that you could train a cat to walk on a leash, too. So when I found this, I thought, well, what the heck? Why don't I give it a try? So what do you think, Bummy? You want to take a walk on a leash? I don't know. Is it huh? something you eat? Bummy, you want to take a walk on a leash? Well, we'll see just how excited he is in just a couple minutes. That's right. We have a leash, and we have the key. What, 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 what is this? What, what's tied to me? Okay. Come on, Bummy. Bummy. This way, baby. This way, baby. No, I don't like this. Come on. Yeah, that's a boy. Okay, this way. Come on, Bummy. Come on, Bummy. Come on, sweetie. This way, please. Come on. That's a boy. That's a boy. Come on, Bummy. Come on, Bummy. Come on. Come on. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Come to me. Come to me, sweetie. Come on. Come to me. No, I don't like this leash. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm just going to sit here. What am I? What am I, like a dog? There we go. No. Come on. It's a boy. That's a good Go away. Okay. Stop it. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Come on. Come, baby. Come to me. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. This I way. I don't want to. Come on. Well, I call that one an epic fail. <laughs> Didn't care for that leash much, did we? <laughs> oh. I don't like leash. Leash is bad. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh well, we'll try it again next time, but now, let's go to the flicks. And what we're going to see is the newest version of Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four is the third superhero outing this summer, following in the wakes of the Avengers Age of Ultron and Ant-Man. Well, Fantastic Four is based on a Marvel comic book. It isn't a Disney Marvel Studios film. This one comes from 20th Century Fox. This is also the third attempt to make a successful Fantastic Four movie. The first was a 1994 Roger Corman-produced Ashcan film 
made to retain film rights bought from Marvel in 1986. Directed by somebody named Oli Sassoon, it was cheesy by anybody's standards and never released into theaters. Later, in fact, Marvel Comics bought the negatives, so it never would be. I even though those negatives were supposedly destroyed, the movie is available on YouTube, God bless them. Fantastic Four came back with a big budget version in 2005. This Tim Story film was met with a lukewarm reaction and his 2007 sequel bombed despite the introduction of the Silver Surfer. While those earlier films were based on Stanley and Jack Kirby's original concept of Marvel's first family, this summer's reboot, uh, a trendy overused term meaning do-over, is based on the ultimate Fantastic Four storyline, which was part of an attempted reboot of Marvel Comics itself back in 2011. Uh, this time out with Josh Trank of Chronicle fame at the directorial helm, Reed, Sue, and Johnny are all teenagers working in a think tank. Johnny's black, Sue is his adopted sister, and Ben, who's more or less gratuitous, lives in a junkyard. Once again, though, the villain is Dr. Doom. It's like he's joined at the hip to the Fantastic Four. He's in all four films and prominent in all three origin stories, which is funny, since he didn't appear in the comics till issue number five. But before we sit down and watch the reboot of Fantastic Four, let's go back and take a look at the films that dominated the box office during a season I call Another Awesome Summer of Superheroes and Dinosaurs. Just like last year, last year was uh, Captain America and Godzilla. This year it's the Avengers and Jurassic World. And dinosaurs play my game. There's no superhero that's capable of taking on a real dinosaur. I wouldn't say that, you overgrown wizard. Who's that? What are you going to do? Sick your ants on me? Oh. Cyberdyne Systems. The future of information systems and robotics. The future of national defense. Cyber Duck System. Oh. Listen to me, everybody. Spider-Man. It must be destroyed before it destroys us. Preventing judgment day. Starting all over. I'll be back. Better place to talk about Fantastic Four. Wow! Fantastic Four is the tail end of a very exciting summer at the box office, all right. It's one that began with Avengers Age of Ultron and was followed by Mad Max, Fury Road, Jurassic World, Terminator Genesis, Minions, and Ant-Man. So how did Fantastic Four stand up against them? Not well. None of the other Fantastic Four movies got it right, but this one got it more wrong than ever. It's a long, boring origin story populated with cardboard cutouts that would be hard for anyone to care about. There are no superheroes, almost no action at all. And one of the fight scenes between Mr. Fantastic and Doctor Doom looks exactly like the Corman version of the same fight, which features the worst special effects of all time. A description of the Thing, whom no one has ever gotten right either, would be a pretty good description of the film itself as well. Namely, a big naked pile of rubble with no genitalia. The good news is, is that the others were much, much better. Of the seven films I've seen this summer, this is how I rate them. 
At the bottom is, of course, Fantastic Four. It's a mess, and I hope 20th Century Fox has the good sense to sell the property back to Marvel. Number six is Mad Max. It's as action-packed as Fantastic Four is dull, but it kind of reminded me of Furious 7 set in a dismal and depressing future. Five is Minions. What can you say? They're Minions. They're funny. They make me want a banana. Number four is Avengers Age of Ultron. This time, instead of fighting hordes of aliens to close a hole in space, they're fighting hordes of robots to keep a city from falling from the sky. Ultron is the most charismatic character in the film, and Stark is either the bad guy or just an asshole. Not bad, but definitely not as good as the first. Three is Terminator Genesis, which, unlike the last two Terminator flicks, finally gets things right. The time-hopping battles takes us back to the very first film, Schwarzenegger is back to fight himself, and the iconic John Connor character returns, but this time in a totally unexpected way. Number two is Jurassic World. Once again, what can you say? Fully functional theme park gone awry, dinosaurs on the loose eating tourists, and Chris Pratt leading a pack of velociraptors. Good times. But number one honors for this summer goes to Ant-Man, which combines the action and special effects Marvel is known for, with the good humor of Guardians of the Galaxy, and a whole lot of fun thanks to Ant-Man star Paul Rudd. And the fight in Avengers headquarters between Ant-Man and the Falcon is worth the price of admission alone. Of course, Rotten Tomatoes totally disagrees with me on all this, but who cares? It's my show. Now, we're going to get the kitty, and we're going to go outside and barbecue. Want to go out and barbecue? Go away. Come on, you know you want to go out and barbecue. I does not want to. I'm sure he'll be excited about it later. Okay, so I'm outside. Now what? Now, when I'm talking about barbecue, I'm not talking about the only real barbecue, and that is with charcoal. I think women might want to turn away from this program right now because we are going into the realm of men. <laughs> You're a wise guy, huh? As we all know, women cook, but men barbecue. You might notice that I placed a potato in the coals before lighting them. That way, when all the cooking's done, I'll have a perfect baked potato. Now that that's done, we'll need to light the coals, but if anyone knows the first thing you do before doing anything in barbecuing is... <laughs> Open a beer. Okay, let's begin. Now, there's only one real manly way to start a barbecue fire, and that is with a match. One match is all it takes for a real man to barbecue. Open a beer. Ah, look at those flames. Now that's one of the big draws of barbecuing to a guy. They get to set stuff on fire. This is boring. I think I'll find my tree. Alright, this is what we're going to barbecue. First, we're going to make a uh, barbecue sauce based. Excellent. First of all, we'll melt some uh, butter in the dish. Yeah, let's see about maybe seconds. Now this will melt the butter inside that little dish. And once it's melted, then we can add this Casey Masterpiece. And that will make our barbecue 
sauce paste. Here's what we have on the platter to cue. All we need now is a brush for basting, and we're ready to cue. Open the beer. Good, the grill is almost 400 degrees. It's ready to go. Yeah, look at that. Awesome. One awesome turn later, look at this, huh? Is that beautiful or what? Potatoes off, off with a lovely shake. So, let's eat. Did someone say eat? Okay, where is food? Where is it? Yum yum, yum yum, yum yum, yum yum. Barbecue! Right now the barbecue is done. Me and my best friends from uh, Oregon, we had started to watch the TV show Supernatural all the seasons. We got to within the last episode that Netflix had which was the last of episode 9. But we never got to see it. So now tonight, I'm in Florida, they're in Oregon. We are watching it on Netflix and keeping in touch by Boxer and watching that last episode together. <laughs> yeah. Save my pennies and I saved my dimes. And then at the end of last month, I headed down to Ron John's Surf Shop in Orlando and I bought myself a seven foot long board and a pair of soft top board racks so that my board could ride on top of my little beam. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm going to put some soft racks on the top of my car for the very first time so that I can mount this surfboard on it. There you go. 
got the shit attached to the top of the car, and we're ready to go. I planned a camping trip to a place on the treasure coast to try it out. But that got ripped out. This bright, sunny, happy August weekend, however, it's a different story. like this where you get to try out a brand new surfboard for the, for the first time and you run into your pastor. I mean really is that a blessed day or what? This is what you call a sand shark. Sand shark. How would you like to see what it looks like from the uh, deck of my new board, huh? Okay, one more way. Okay, this isn't going to be as easy as it was with a body board. Okay, so my waterproof camera isn't a GoPro, but I didn't lie, at least you could see the deck. Okay, I learned something down here at the beach that is so amazing that once you hear it, your life will never be the same again. I'm serious, are you ready? This is one of those truths that's just astounding. There it is. Salt water, like that right out there. will not wash the contact lenses out of your eyes. It's true. I've been surfing all day with my contacts in, and they're still there. For some reason, which I can't figure out, I was talking to other surfers, they agree with the same, they've said the same thing. But salt water won't wash your contacts out. I wish there's a lifeguard line to jump into a pool to make a rescue and both, both lenses are gone immediately. I remember the idiot that I was working with looking at me going, Oh, you lost your lens? That's too bad. Let's go in and see if we can find them. I thought, yeah. Tiny little clear lenses in water. Let's go look. <laughs> but it's serious. Out there in the ocean? No. They just stay right in there. Huh? There you go. Amazing discovery number one. Maybe one more wave. Well, after spending some time in the waves, there's only one place I can think of that I really want to go now. And that's to, uh, to the Cocoa Beach Steak and Shake. <laughs> that's right. After a lot of time in the water, there's nothing like one of their Steak and Shake original steak burgers. In case you don't know, it is one of the best burger joints on the East Coast. It really truly is. It's got what's called a, a double double cheese steak burger for like under $4. Then it's just intensely good. Okay, when I said I was 
said the ultimate burger joint. I wasn't kidding. Look at that. Ain't nothing like a Coca-Cola in an original Coca-Cola glass. I wonder where he went. I wonder if he's ever coming home. I wonder if anyone's ever going to fill my food dish. Honestly, I'm sorry. That leash wasn't that bad. By the way, the novel I was reading on that Saturday morning was Ghost Country by Patrick Lee. And on Netflix, that episode of Supernatural was episode number 23, season 9, Do You Believe in Miracles? Beach Bum have an awful lot of fun here doing the last wander of Mars. <laughs> He's well, he here as a rescue. I found him on the doorstep uh, about two years ago. He was about two months old. He was starving. His eye was hurt. And he was just meowing and begging for attention. We took him in, and he's been my constant little companion ever since. Rescuing an innocent little kitty or puppy makes all the difference in the world. You'll save their lives and change yours forever as you lose your heart to one of these little guys. But you don't have to wait for one to show up at your door. Every town has a shelter run by the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, of the ASPCA. There you'll find hundreds of precious cats and dogs who would love for someone to adopt them and give them a good home. Go for it. You'll never look back, and you'll never be sorry. Visit ASPCA.org to find that shelter near you.